All right, what's up? What's up? Just setting up the live stuff here. Looks like we're live. Cool. Let me show you what we're going to build today. Today we're going to build this analog clock. It's actually digital because it lives on a computer, but hey, uh, it is what it is. Just a simple clock. Main things we're going to look at are some page structure in Webflow as well as some simple JavaScript. All right, let's get into it. So I have a blank project in Webflow here. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Drag a div block. We'll call this, I don't know, outer wrap. Uh, give it a flex, vertical. And I'm going to put everything in the middle. This is just kind of the, the outer wrapper. 100% width and 100% of the viewport height. Give that a background color so it starts looking pretty already. Let's do a gradient. We'll go with like a uh, orange is kind of aggressive. That's good for that. Now let's build a clock face. It's just all going to be built in CSS. Uh, this I'm going to build using some borders. Let's give it a width of 50 viewport widths and a height of 50 viewport widths. That'll lock it to a square aspect ratio and also just help it be responsive right off the bat. Um, well, we can't see anything because I haven't actually put anything there. But let's go ahead and border width the 10 looks good. Can make it white, but let's do something like this, and then we'll keep a little bit of color on there. And I'll save this into a swatch. Thistle, thistle color. Okay, moving on. Give it a border radius 100 VW, so it is circular. I'm gonna. Make it a little bit thicker. Let's shift over to rim here. Okay, I like that. Let's call this the clock face. Start building out some of the hands here. I'm gonna call this second hand. The second hand is gonna be the largest one. And in the clock face, let's do flex center everything as well. And I'm going to want this width to be, say, 90%. That's way too big. 40%. And then the height will be, what did we use? One rim. Give it that same color. Now if I want to add the rounded edges, just give it the border radius. But it's right in the middle here. So what I want to do is I want to use the transforms to rotate the actual hand. But of course, that's not going to do it for us right now since it's right in the middle. We can shift the transform origin here. And if I move it, let's see, here, will that do it? Yeah, so that's kind of what we're looking for, but we need to shift it over. So let's go, so it has a width of 40%. If I give it a negative left margin, let's see, of the same as the width. And now if I apply the transform, That's looking good. 
the transform, it looks a little bit like the middle is kind of off, right? That's because the transform is happening from right here. Ideally, it would be from like right here, so you could shift it, I guess. Like this is where we would want the pin, but I think I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Deal with the other stuff later. Uh, okay, so we have the second hand. And now let's grab a minute hand. Oh, one thing I want to do is I want to make this absolute. And of course, that's going to mess me all up because now I need to make it relative to this. And we're good. The second hand is going to be very similar or the minute hand to the second hand. So I'm just going to duplicate and call it the minute hand, but I'm going to make it, I don't know, maybe 30%. And so I have to change the negative margin here. Here we go. And let's make an hour hand now. Okay. This one will just make 20%. Oops, negative 20%. Ah, oh, come on, Keegan. Okay. And let's make sure. Yep, so that's looking good. I think that's all we need for the structure here. I got second hand, minute hand, and an hour hand. So what I'm going to do now is go into code sandbox. Let's make a new sandbox. Call it static. I want the static one, and now we're just going to add index.js. That's a JavaScript file. And what I'm going to do to get this code into Webflow is copy this over here. Come over to my Webflow project, click home. And now here I want a script, and I'm going to import the source from here, and then it's index.js. Oh, this needs an equals. Save that and publish. Awesome. Let's open. going on here is everything else absolute second hand minute hand oops we want desktop what did i do to you why are you over there oh this got reset again okay let me just republish that Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to get the time. And based on that time, we want to do some rotations of those hands. So first thing I'm going to do, go in here, and I'm going to get my selectors. So we'll say document.query selector. And I could select it by class here. But in general, I try not to do that, just in case I change the class names later. So I'll take second hand, and I'm just going to give this a ID of second hand. Call this minute hand. Call this hour hand. I'm going to need to publish again. And since I'm selecting by ID now, I get rid of this period, change it to a number sign. Okay, so this will select all of my items. I'll show you here. Just bringing up the console here. I think I can probably turn on Keycaster if that helps. Let's see. Okay, now we're now you can see what I'm pressing. Uh, let's go to elements. And there, now you can see we're able to select the 
second hand and it gives us uh, this HTML element. And what we're going to want to do is we're also going to want to get the time. And we'll do that by saying const now equals new date. Date is just a available to us in JavaScript natively. And we'll say let seconds equal now dot get seconds. Let minute equal now dot get minutes, let hours equal now dot get hours, let's see, show you what I'm talking about. This is a documentation on the date object and you see what um, functions you can get here. You get all this stuff, get day, get full year, get milliseconds, get seconds is what we're using. It'll tell you what it returns. Anyways, back to this. So the way we're going to want to do this is we'll make a function. And we'll just call this uh, set time equals a function using the arrow syntax here. And then we're going to use the set interval function to run this every second. So this is in milliseconds, so that's why it's a thousand. So we could just, for now, console.log, let's say seconds, seconds. And let's do hours just because that's a bit more interesting or at least verifiable with my timestamp up here. Okay, so saving that. We'll refresh over here. And there, you see seconds to hours 12. And it's not updating because we don't actually update it. We get it, we get the, um, we get the time here and then we set seconds to now dot get seconds. And all we're doing is we're just console logging that seconds value. If we wanted to actually update it, we say seconds plus equals uh, one because it's happening every second, right? So now if I save and refresh over here, seconds 33, 34, 35, and yeah, it's 12. We don't, we could log the minutes if we want, just to verify. I kind of use, I shouldn't use this interchangeably, but it's what I'm doing right now. There we go. And we'll see this roll over to 50 for the minutes. Let's watch it. Oh, it didn't because we're not updating it, right? So it makes sense. And then the other thing we don't want is we're just counting up 69 seconds, 70, 71. That really doesn't do us much good for the purpose of our clock. So what we could do, actually, let's just leave this here. I'm not going to comment that out yet. Is we'll say seconds plus equals one, minutes plus equals one divided by 60. And hours plus equals one divided by, so there's 36 or 3,600 seconds in an hour, right? And we're going to use these to make our rotation of the clock elements. And since, remember that seconds thing, we don't want that to go to 61, 62, 63. So we'll say if seconds is equal to zero. Actually, this is. I'll get to this later. Let's say secondhand dot CSS. Actually dot style dot transform equals. And now transform, this will take a string. And we want to rotate in Z. And now we're going to say dollar sign and open and close curly brackets to pass in these variables. So it's going to say second hand, it's not defined. Of course. So we need to actually set these to variables up here. And 
just using camel case, this is typical in JavaScript, whereas these lowercase with the hyphen is typical in CSS. And so we're setting our transform here. Oops. But this really doesn't mean anything because we have not yet converted these to usable units of degrees. Rotate takes degrees, right? If we go back here and we look at our rotation. wants a value unit of degrees. So let's go back in here and we will set that. And so I'm just going to take the value of seconds and divide that by 60. Now multiply it by 360. Do the same for minutes and hours. Spelling degrees wrong here. In hours, I'm going to divide by 12. And let's pass these in here. Oops. Go ahead and save. And let's see what happens. And cart reference read properties of null style. Okay. Let's troubleshoot that a little bit. Secondhand.style.transform. Let me just go ahead. I'm going to stop console logging so I can do a little troubleshooting here. And I'll get secondhand. Why is that not showing up? It's selected here. Looks like we haven't, maybe we haven't refreshed, so it's not actually getting that ID. Pretty sure I published it. Got the hour hand, but the second hand and minute hand not coming through. I don't know. Maybe I didn't do need to press enter. Let me find out. out that second hand and the hour hand. All right. Pretty sure I did that, but I must have clicked away somehow and it didn't register in there. Okay, so we have second hand, minute hand, hour hand. Now I can get the second hand. And I think maybe the dot style was not working because it was uh, not actually selecting anything because we didn't have the ID there. Dot style dot transform equals let's grab what we had from over here okay paste that and rather we don't have this variable really say 60 degrees and see what that gets us nothing do I need to put degree here? Yes, I do. Okay. So we've got that. Let's go back. And don't forget, we need to get this here. Degree, degree, degree. And save. And now refresh. And we've got some movement and we've got some time. But something we're noticing, it is currently 1256 where I'm at here in San Francisco, and this is showing nine. And this is a result because our code assumes that we're starting from the zero position or the, the 12 o'clock position. But the way we 
put our hands on the screen is that they're at the nine o'clock position here. So let's just go ahead and add a initial transform and we'll say we want it to start at 90 degrees. Add this to all of them. And publish and see what we get. Refresh. All right, they're starting from up there. And now they go, let's see. They're still going to the wrong place. Okay, and the reason this is happening, let's think about it, is that we're setting our degrees here and we're still just setting it uh, based on based on that nine o'clock position. So if I just simply add 90, because we added 90 in Webflow, we have to do it here as well. Okay, and now it's looking like 1258 in however many seconds. So we've got a functioning clock now, and all we need to do is clean it up. And notice it's pretty responsive already. It does kind of get small, a little bit weird on smaller screens, so we'll deal with that too. And the way we'll deal with that, let's see. That's good for iPad, but once we get to mobile, let's have this clock face take up, I don't know, 90 by 90. And since these were percent, these are just going to scale accordingly. Need to publish that again. This actually looks all right. One thing that I had on this one is you have this a bit of a nicer movement here. And the way we can achieve that is by adding a transition to the second hand. So let's say transitions and we'll do the, we're miss, we're changing the transform. So we'll do it there. And the easing function, we could do all sorts of things here. I like this uh, ease out back. That's going to make it go past the mark and then come back like kind of like uh, you would see on an old timey clock, I guess. Let's see how that works. Refresh. You can see it kind of bounce up and back. It's pretty subtle. The ways we could change that are by uh, move this up to 300 seconds, and then I'll just affect the easing curve manually like this. You'll we'll see it be more pronounced. Cool, that was a nice effect. And now it's doing this, it's a little aggressive now, I feel like, but uh, I think it's working just fine. Let's add a little dot in the middle just because this is bothering me. Call it middle dot. And we can make this absolute as well. And we'll just set this Height manually. That's too big. And make this white or this color. And we want to make it rounded. Maybe a little bit bigger. Try that. Come on, Webflow. Maybe we can work on something else while. Eh. Okay. It's kind of a crazy uh, start there. Something I was playing around with earlier. Seconds equals equals zero. Secondhand dot CS up oh, dot style dot 
transition. Uh, we'll just set this to be blank. And I think this might, yeah, it's a bit better. Okay. And I think that's really all I want to cover, at least for the build. Some things I would do to clean up are, let's look at that clock in all its glory. It's amazing. Rather than host this on Code Sandbox, I'll just copy this code and I'll put it directly into the Webflow project. We can delete, well, we still want the script tags, but now we're not going to import it. We're just going to run it directly through Webflow. You could still host it there, but it just means that if, I don't know, every, anything ever happened to your Code Sandbox account or they stop allowing you to host code like that, then your site would break. So anytime I'm working on production sites or really any site in general, once I've finished the testing, I'll save the code within Webflow and then republish. And now as we make changes here, we won't see that reflected on our actual site, but it should still be working. Uh, if you want to change the favicon, which I always do, just take a screenshot and throw it in there. Other than that, nothing else to show. Let's see. I had zero viewers. I took about, uh, how long have I been going now? 26 minutes and 50 seconds. So that's good. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, keep tuning in. I'm just going to keep coming out with Webflow as well as JavaScript and TypeScript and just got a whole bunch of stuff coming. So yeah, if you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe and check out other stuff that I have coming out.